Christopher Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at the Droid Incredible 4G LTE. That's the third generation Droid from HTC, and it's a lovely little phone. And I say little because it's a 4-inch display here, and nowadays when you're looking at 4.8-inch giant screen phones, this guy's actually kind of pocketable and portable. The Droid Incredible 4G LTE is the third generation Droid Incredible from HTC. We have Droid Incredible 1, the Droid Incredible 2, and instead of calling it the Droid Incredible 3, we have the 4G LTE model. The, the Droid Incredible, or the Dink, has always been a popular phone, and there's a lot of good reasons for that. Good quality build, nice display, reasonable size in this one. For those of you who think that uh, Samsung Galaxy S3 is a nice Android phone, but 4.8 inches, well, that's just getting kind of big for you. There's the 4-inch Droid Incredible for you. LCD display here. QHD resolution. We're not going up to full 720p, but that's because, well, it's 4 inches and things get, do get kind of tiny. So you're looking at 960 by 540 pixels. Same as the Motorola Droid Razor and Razor Max in terms of resolution. Got your capacitive buttons here. We're running Ice Cream Sandwich OS 4.0 with HTC Sense 4 software. I like what HTC has done with the Sense software a lot, and we'll talk about that in detail. And on the back, we have that distinctive waterfall finish that we've seen in all of HTC's Droid Incredible line. Kind of the sculpted back gives it an interesting look. A little texture here makes it more griffy. Soft touch finish feels good. Red ring around the lens to jazz things up a little bit. You got an 8 megapixel camera here with a backside illuminated sensor. No dedicated imaging chip like we have on the HTC One X. Too bad Verizon didn't want to pick up the One X, but this is their own interpretation, shall we say, of the One X. It brings a lot of the goodness of the new One series over to Verizon. Got our flash here. A little shiny corner just for some visual interest. Red power button. Doesn't rattle. Easy to press, but not too easy to press. That means accidental button presses aren't a problem. Up here we have our 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, microphone hole. It's your volume rocker here on the side. This is the little pull spot to take the back cover off. Yes, you can remove the back cover. Sealed phones are becoming more and more common, like the One X and the Razer again. You can open this guy up. We'll show you that in a minute. Here's your micro USB port on the side. And we've got our Beats Audio logo down here, since this does have Beats Audio. And that works with any headphones, by the way. You don't have to have Beats headphones to take advantage of that audio enhancement. And it does work for headphones, not for the built-in speaker. Let's take a look inside. First, first thing to notice here is it's pretty easy to take this back on and off. It's nice. Some phones lately, boy, it's been a real wrestling match to get them on and off. Comes off easily. That's what the inside of the cover looks like. We've got some contacts right up here. This probably be the NFC plate maybe or it could be an anti-interference plate and this is the micro SD card slot it does not come with a card it's up to you to put one in there if you want has 8 gigs of internal storage and this is where our 1700 milliamp battery lives obviously user replaceable and swappable and now for size comparison we've got several popular phones lined up together so you can see how small this guy is of course the iPhone is only 3.5 inches so it is going to be the smallest but you can see that the Droid Incredible is not so much bigger, really. If we put one on top of the other, not so much of a size difference. And here we've got the Droid Razor, 4.3 inch display. Pretty big phone overall, though. It kind of dwarfs the Droid Incredible 4G LTE. And here's the HTC One X, 4.7 inch display on AT&T. So yes, for those of you who just hate giant phones, this is probably the phone for you, though. Let's put it this way, 4 inches really still isn't that teeny because it's still a little bit bigger than the iPhone, which is the small guy on the block these days. Now that we've looked at the outside, how about the inside? As you can see here, we've got the usual HTC flip clock. That's a part of the HTC Sense 4.0 software, which does a decent job of letting Ice Cream Sandwich, uh, Android OS 4.0, shine through. You don't have a menu button down here because ICS goes for the buttonless approach, so you're going to get to your settings by swiping down. You can see your notifications. And you can hit settings right here to get to all of your settings. And as usual, it's Sense 4 HTC is customized. I think they made it look pretty nice. Little colorful icons over here. Everything's clear and easy to read. A little bit more exciting maybe than the white on black or blue on black kind of interface. A 
The phone has Wi-Fi, 811BGN, dual band, Bluetooth 4.0, and it has a GPS, and it's got NFC as well. We've got our quick launch strip here, and also if you put the phone to sleep, you're going to get that usual HDC ring. You can drag up an application to launch it while you're unlocking the phone at the same time. Pretty convenient. Samsung has copied that in the Galaxy S3, as a matter of fact, with their TouchWiz software. And if you want to get to all your applications, you just tap right there, and there's your grid of all your apps. Now you can see all the apps look really, the icons look nice and fine and sharp, and that's, again, because we've got QHD put on a 4-inch display here, so that makes it pretty sharp. This is a Super LCD display, not a Super LCD 2, so it doesn't look quite as stunning in terms of eye-popping color and brightness as, say, the HTC One X does, but still a very nice display. And we've got our usual organizational stuff here that HTC does. You can see all your applications, the things you use most frequently, and downloaded applications just by switching between these navigation buttons down here. And we have our Verizon apps added as a new tab, for sense, that segregates all your Verizon preloaded stuff right there. The phone has a gig of RAM, and again, it has 8 gigs of internal storage. Not all of that's available for your use. You can use a micro SD card to expand your storage, put all your data on there, your videos, all that kind of thing. Obviously, it has LTE 4G. It also has EVDO Rev A for data if you're not an LTE coverage area. But Verizon's coverage footprint is, is so large right now with LTE that good chances that you are in a coverage area. In terms of our speed tests, you can see that what we've been getting in the Dallas area good speeds right there. The, the, the worst that we did was 10 megabit per second down. That, that's really good right there. And then we as high as 14. And obviously upload speeds are doing pretty well too. Upper nines and sometimes even faster. And ping times are reasonably good. Not as fast as we see on AT&T's LTE network some of the time, but I think that Verizon has a lot more users right now on their LTE network since it's so well built out and they have so many LTE phones available for sale. So definitely good data speeds here. No complaints for web browsing, speed downloads, apps download very quickly from the market. And it does the usual Verizon phone thing where it tries to turn on Wi-Fi whenever you use anything that uses the internet. If that bugs you, you can turn it off or you pref if you'd prefer to have it use Wi-Fi so you don't hit your data cap, well, then you're going to love that feature. In terms of voice quality and volume, volume is good. I'd say it's about average to a little bit above average for the earpiece and about average for our callers. Voice sounded clear, but it sounded a bit digitized on both ends as well. And we had a pretty good signal when that was happening, so I think that probably just is the way it is. And we noticed the same thing with the HTC Resound. It sounds like the DSP is maybe a little bit overactive. Again, it's not intelligible, unintelligible. It's not a terrible problem, but it's not landline clear. Decent. Pretty good, though. And you can see what the dialer looks like here. This is HTC's customized dialer. We've got a quick shortcut to the phone, to our contacts, to groups, so on. And nice, big, easy-to-use buttons and options to switch the speakerphone. You can also control things like your Bluetooth headset and all that. One nice thing about HTC Sense software, uh, say you've got a meeting appointment for a, a dialing conference call or something like that. It just happened to me, and I really appreciated the software. I tapped on the, the calendar entry and it brought it up and it had the number to dial as a hot link. So I tapped on that and then all the information I needed for the dial-in passcode, everything was shown right here. So I was thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to try to look at two screens at once, the dialer screen and that? Well, they actually split up for you. HTC Sense has all sorts of little quiet features, I would call them, that just make your life with the phone a whole lot easier. They may not be as flashy as some of the things Samsung has added with TouchWiz, but in the end, it makes using the phone just a very productive and easy thing. In terms of performance, we have a 1.2 GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon S4. It's a great CPU, fourth generation. Now that 1.2 GHz CPU is obviously underclocked a little bit compared to the 1.5 GHz CPU we see in a lot of other current smartphones, and I don't know why it's underclocked really, but performance is still very fast. These phones are faster honestly right now than any software you can throw at them or any task. They're overkill. That's great for future proofing, uh, but right now I don't think you're going to feel the difference between 1.2 and 1.5 gigahertz. In terms of synthetic benchmarks on Quadrant, the phone scored a very respectable 4249. Now that's not quite as fast as the 5000 we see on the HTC One X and the Samsung Galaxy S3 running the same CPU at 1.5 gigahertz, but again it's plenty fast enough. On 2.2 score was 5965. 
That compares to 6826 for the Samsung Galaxy S3, but still a very good number. Sun Spider 1802, where lower numbers are better, and that's actually one of the fastest that we've seen yet. And the Egypt, Egypt off-screen test for GL testing, 56 FIPS, right up there with the big boys, very respectable. Now you can use the standard Google Play Music on this, or a third-party music player if you like, and we have HTC's music app here, which is pretty nice. It brings in related applications, you can customize this, that pertain to music playback, obviously, Slacker, Amazon MP3, and you can put other things in here. And then it shows us tracks that are available for playing, and if there's album art available, it shows us the album art. And you can see what the, the UI looks like, very pleasing and nice, and the speaker sounds good too. This is obviously a fairly quiet piece of music, and we'll try it with a video so you can hear something louder, but th the sound is pretty rich and full for a smartphone. And now we'll check out video playback. We're in Gallery, the standard Android Gallery application, and we're going to play an MPEG-4 high-profile movie trailer, so it's very high quality. And we have the sound about three-quarters of the way up. So there you go, playback's good. The speaker's pretty impressive, isn't it? It's loud and full. So that's video playback on the Droid Incredible 4G LTE. And now we're checking out the camera. We're looking at the rear 8 megapixel camera right now. You can see shutter speeds are pretty fast. Like, instant. And if you want to shoot video, you simply do that, and it immediately starts recording video. That's a new HTC thing, and as you can see, we've got a shutter button here, so you can take pictures, and there they are appearing just like that very quickly while you're shooting video, which is pretty cool, and we're shooting 1080p video. If you want to check out our pictures, and our videos, there's our video. And here are the pictures that we shot of our wonderful bathtub toy. So, pretty good for low light, has a backside illuminated sensor, does not have that dedicated imaging chip, but overall, a nice camera, definitely. Good detail, good colors, reasonably good low light handling, and it does nicely outdoors too, we don't get a whole lot of white out in bright sunny settings. In terms of software bundle, you can see everything that Verizon has loaded, we've got the usual Let's Golf 3, Verizon App Store, Amazon MP3, Amazon Kindle, the mobile hotspot feature because this can be a high-speed wireless modem for your tablet or your notebook or what have you. My Verizon Mobile to manage your account, NFL Mobile, Real Racing 2, Slacker Radio, Slingbox, Fecast Tones, Verizon Video, Voicemail, and VZ Navigator on board. And besides that, we have all the usual HTC applications and standard Google Android applications on board too. All right, now we're going to test out gaming. We've got EA's Real Racing 2 here. And we'll go with that Volvo. Green is nice and colorful for this kind of game. And I'm racing my Volvo against a whole lot of other Volvos. Play smoothly. Graphics look nice. Sound is obviously loud and clear. Phone is fast enough to handle any kind of game. LTE phones on Verizon haven't always done so well with battery life, but 
There have been a lot of improvements. The Qualcomm S4 CPU is very power frugal and also Qualcomm makes a very good radio chipset that that handles the switch between LTE and 3G pretty well without destroying your power. So we've actually found that we can make it through the day with one, one sing, single 1700 milliamp battery uh, no problem on a charge in our LTE coverage area. So that's pretty good. Definitely progress there uh, and a good selling point. So that's the Droid Incredible 4G LTE by HTC, the third generation HTC Droid for Verizon Wireless. It's available now. It's $199 with contract, though right now Verizon has a web sale going on and it's $149 with contract. And obviously uh, the biggest competition it's going to have right now is the Samsung Galaxy S3 that just came out, which is the same price. Bigger phone, bigger display, lots of nice features. They're also very tempting. So really what it comes down to with this phone is your preference for HTC Sense versus Samsung TouchWiz and the size of the phone. If you don't like a big phone, well, then obviously the Incredible has an advantage there. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website to read the full review of the Droid Incredible 4G LTE. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.